Hello, welcome to the commentary for Born of Hope. I'm Kate Madison, the director, producer, actor, and I'm here with Christopher Dane, who is the main actor and editor for the film. Yes, yeah, so I, I only have two hats, and you've got like, how two many hats? Ha- I've got three or more. Fourteen or something like that. Yeah. Aha. Uh-huh. We all have multiple hats. Um, so hopefully you've already seen the film, and now we're going to give you some backstory to various things that happen through the film. Um, oh, it's already begun. Um, we wanted to start the film. It's very hard to talk over it, isn't it? Uh, it is really, yeah, but uh, um, I guess that's what a commentary is. <laughs> it is. So, the, the start of the film, we wanted to have this sort of kind of um, very mysterious beginning, didn't we, really? To, yeah. um, to kind of capture people, the, the fact that this film is uh, an internet film. And we didn't know who really, we obviously knew fans were going to watch it, but we wanted to, to also find other people who might just be browsing the web and just come across it. So you've got to capture those people within a couple of minutes of that. Not even that, a couple no, of seconds, seconds really. really yeah. um, which is why we kind of started this with a kind of, a, almost a trailer style start. Um, we wanted this snappy scene to just like, kind of hit you in the face and... and yeah. uh, and it, one of the things, as you can see there, you can see that close-up of his hands. It was, it was to introduce that whole thing of the rings and. Yeah, that was the joy of it. We we wanted something to really sort of um, hit home, but at the same time, we get to introduce that guy who was our main. Shaknar. Yeah, our main baddie, mm-hmm. Shaknar. We got to introduce the fact that the orcs are hunting for rings and hacking off hands of Dunedain. Um and yeah, just generally sort of get it all bad before we go into this which is our, our which prologue. is really I, I really really I love this sequence because it's just after that opening that's mm. really dramatic and swords and blood and everything and then we come into this it's really very slow. Yeah, yeah really slow and serene and and, and I, I like the um, what um, what was written here as well yeah so that whole we came from the water that sense of and that, that, that actually it developed after we got the footage as well, didn't it? Because we oh, ha- we right. actually had a, a longer prologue than this that went all in about Numenor and the Dunedain and then um, Isildur and that coming from, like, riding with the ships, uh, the nine ships of the faithful from Numenor. And mm. had this amazing sort of quite an epic opening. Um, and uh, But it, it would involve quite a lot of VFX. And we start, yeah, we kind big. of, we had the idea, but it just never quite came to fruition, which was a shame. But Well, but you actually, say it's a shame. Well, it's a shame in a I way. I actually like this a lot. Yeah, though. exactly. I think and then this, this shot, we benefit from it. This shot is really... And the interesting thing about this shot is probably the last special effect shot that was done for the film. Um, I think it was, pretty much. It was yeah. one of the last two. And it's beautiful. Um, a beautiful, sort of, this is the first time you'll ever see or you ever saw sort of Dol Gador, yeah. um, which, because if people don't know the backstory, that's where Sauron is at this time in the, in the timeline of, of Middle Earth for us. He's not, there's no big Mount Doom, it's not, he's not immortal. He's in this castle thing in Mirkwood. And so we got to show that, which was great. Mm. And as well, I think the good thing is that it's sort of seen and it's going from the waterfall into this CGI thing and then back into, into the shots action, that we yeah. did. And and in, uh, a good thing to talk about here is the whole shift of colour. Yeah, people have noticed the, the shift in colour that we do pretty much whenever the orcs turn up. Um, and because uh, people, you know, the, the orcs aren't really meant to ca- travel around in bright sunshine, they don't like it. Um, but obviously, we couldn't shoot loads and loads of stuff at night, it just wasn't practical. Mm. And. Um, but at the same time, so we sort of like had this, we, we dulled down the colour a lot, lost a lot of the saturation, as if this sort of cloud just came over with them. And, um, we sort of imagined a yeah. Sauron's shadow almost, just sort of travelling with them and giving it this really sickly green. Yeah, because those greens, it was actually Andy who graded the film, who kind of came up with these sickly yellows yeah, and colours, the sickly yeah. green stuff. And it, and if you go back and you look at the Dol Guldur shot, it's already in there, these weird greens and the, and the yellow. Mm, yeah. I like the build-up here, you know, with the music as well, Rob's music, sort of whipping up this. Yeah, totally. And this is our first, obviously, introduction to the Rangers. This essentially is the first scene, even though we've had, like, I don't know, two, three minutes mm. or more of the movie already. But this is the introduction of all our main characters, um, and it's quite a long. It was and he's awesome, that guy with the sword. 
Wow, he's good. <laughs> yeah, and very modest. <laughs> Indeed. Um, oh, this, there's so much to talk about, there's no time, but um, Dihail, Andrew plays Dihail, um, wasn't around for some of the shooting of this scene. The scene we shot over four days, um, different fighting bits, had extreme changes in weather um, that luckily you shouldn't be able to notice because of the grade. Um, well, that's one thing I think that that, that the grade has. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think the grade has helped it a lot here. Yeah. To be, because you know what people don't realise when you see this or what you don't notice is that this was shot like over two or three months. There's actually a couple of shots uh, from a completely different time uh, where you can see there's no leaves and all that sort of thing. Oh yeah, well, I see what you mean. But it it all sort of gels together because of these colours. Yeah. So that was my favourite. One of my favourite moments i loved it when we were shooting that i didn't say cut i said lovely when uh, <laughs> when Gilrain and and uh, arathon kind of meet essentially for yeah. the first time i i loved the idea that um, that they meet in this kind of way that just sort of this moment and the music just works perfectly with it it's great yeah. and as you can see look the colors are back um and that's actually funny enough how most of it looked the sun with yes. the sunshine we had stuff beautiful like sunshine until i had to do my fighting and then it mm. absolutely drowned us um, that day and so all my fight stuff was in the pissy rain <laughs> um, but yeah but this is beautiful and this this was a sort of these are a couple of different cameras this I think we're on our um, adapter camera here so you've got a lovely out of focus background which and gives I it a very filmy look yeah it does and one thing here that you like these shots of uh, the Heil and Arathorn um, we actually shot those without any other people there. Oh yeah, I, d I think I was still coming up from makeup. Yeah, myself, you were still in makeup. Even. The orcs were still in makeup, and we didn't have the two girls. No, there was only they, one. We didn't even have was the Was there cart. only one day when the four of them were, or the four of you guys were all together? Because yeah. I yeah. think one day Andrew couldn't be there, one or two days, yeah, because he was always working, and Philippa couldn't be there another day, and the cart wasn't there. You know, like we didn't have the, the cart, cart on the first not, yeah. day. So I the first forget. day we filmed a lot of the stuff with... A lot of the dialogue um, stuff, I think. ...Arathorn and, and Dehile, where there's no one. It's my <laughs> first scene. Oh, yeah, there you are. <laughs> with your and fingers. And our prosthetic fingers. I think they look really... They do. Good Fantastic. In, in Lucy yeah, did those. Kind of Lucy Darkness did those. They're brilliant. Um, work with our rings. A nice sort of... What I like about the script is that it, it sort of introduces nice little backstories for people, like for your character here we're talking about about your dad and yeah. what has happened in I the kind past. of like the fact that we don't explain too much. I think it gives the audience a sort of like, oh, what's this? And what's he yeah. talking about? And who's he talking about? Oh, he's talking about her dad. And, um, although I know it's confused, we, we do know it's confused a few people who got confused with it the opening with the, scene yeah, and thought Maya that, in the opening. that I was Maya or that Maya was, was Elgar and was a younger yeah. character. but. Um, so we sort There's of, Howard. We, we fell into that. This is another introduction of a character. <laughs> I noticed that we actually name each character <laughs> because we were so worried at the beginning that, that people that we had so much to introduce um, and so much backstory to tell. Like because obviously, you, you know, we have Arathorn and Gilroy meeting in this very first scene. Mm -hmm. So we had to show the backstory, like of Algorin's character and and uh, Dearborn's character, bef be suddenly before the meeting. We yeah. had to show. Yeah the characters and then they meet and then and it's all done very quickly and luckily hasn't seemed to have confused anyone it's like very obvious from the get-go yeah how characters feel about each other i love that little look from beth it's such a girly <laughs> it's look. A it's cheeky brilliant. little look and this scene just works so yeah. well yeah. in just a few lines you kind of absolutely know what these characters feel for each other and how they are and the, the friendliness the music just captures it as well yeah. i love what rob's done here with this little this really sort of little friendly bit here it's brilliant yeah and subtle little things like um Enas, who was uh, the sound designer on it um there's not a lot of um actual real sound on this no we, we like got the rid of loads and of all production stuff was sound put was in afterwards yeah i mean all f everything was not everything, but but nearly all scenes were. And here's our Lord of Rings our map. moment. Beautiful our map. maps made by Edward um, in Canada. Oh yeah. He sent over two beautiful maps. One of Middle Earth in general. One of the sort of localized area where Tawadol was. And he sort of invented. I can't remember. If, I think he invented Tawadol, or did. 
No, I can't no, remember, I don't is, think he did. But it is definitely invented, I think isn't that it? Was, that was invented yeah. uh, by Alex, the script writer. She invented Tower Doll. And he, but he also added in various... Um, those maps have such detail on them. Yeah, no, they're great maps. Um, so beautiful. And that was actually shot in your flat here in London. Was <laughs> <laughs> that was the, one of the last it shots It was of the actually, film. yeah. That was the wrap of the film. It was, was actually <laughs> filmed in my flat. Yeah. On, on um, my table there. And now, now we're in July. That was... Um, That's from the this, first this week. This is one of, of our um, first things. Yeah. Principal photography, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And again, Andy has jo- done a great job on that scene because that was, it was very, so very orange. orange. Yeah. It was very sort of warm and a little too warm. Oh, and, and this, this uh, talking of warm. <laughs> yeah, this is actually the complete opposite. I mean, you can see it a bit where well, you can when see the breath, Andrew is sort of talking. But even so, but, yeah. it was minus five. Minus five. Everything went white. Um, and we were shooting this. Well, we ended up sort of finishing about one in the morning or something yeah. crazy, yeah. just because of the time it took to set up everything and then sh- shoot everyone. Because we were trying to sort of send people off to a hut to keep warm because we had no interior. We had nothing well, we that have, day. No, we have to explain that we, we this was filmed at Westo, yeah, it was which is our, our main location with all the huts and stuff. And there was nothing. There was nothing there for us. No, no one was heaters, there for us. No, no nothing. <laughs> absolutely nothing. Because when we were there in July, we had these big porter cabins. Uh, which you'll probably see in behind the scenes, but we didn't have anything when we went back in November They because they'd taken those port cabins away mm. pretty much. Li- they literally were ripping them out when I was unpacking in July. Yeah. Um, but just to... Uh, Andrew, yeah. Andrew did a, a fantastic speech. Beautiful. And, I mean, yeah, I, did, I almost didn't notice at the time because we were trying to do so many different things and we were just shooting people and, and I was in c- costume and... And things, and then afterwards, you sort of watch the footage and go, "My God, look at the tear in his eye!" Yeah, there's a little tear in the brilliant. corner of his eye, and, and and he only did it. He only did two takes. He only did two takes of that, and yeah. and Just and spot it. on, really, both times. It was it was quite quite incredible. I do. I love this. I love this moment. Mm. Um, and the fact he looks so warm and lovely as well. It's just so great. Because of the, the, the flames in front. Yeah, of the, the flames in front stuff, just adds. Which was actually just torches being held up. Yeah, we, we didn't just have any special effects, so we were literally using the, the four torches. We sort of held them in front of the camera and did a sort of flame bar thing. It's, it's a kind of well known technique, really, but we were sort of struggling to do it with very limited equipment yeah. and stuff. Um, and this was. This was November as well. This was like the Thursday of the November shoot. Yeah. Very uh, well, not very early, but early enough. Quite cold, and you can tell it. But it looks so great. This. Um, it just gives uh, this scene. the whole the misty thing. Lovely, you know, yeah. it's just like a, a, an extra filter on there's the camera. Just, then. Yeah. Nature just provided. Oh, totally. Yeah, and there's just that solitary like um, fire in the background because it's meant to be early morning, and, and I love just the sound design as well in this. Yeah. Just some odd because none of this birds. dialogue is um, the no, original. This, this was all ADR'd in the end because yeah. we had, I think we had someone chopping wood and racing bikes or something. There was there, there was, was a lot few, going few on. Few motorbikes going on in, in the background. Various or, times, or yeah. a chainsaw or something like that. And this um, this whole scene actually was was edited down, wasn't it? In the edit, this was yeah. a much longer scene where they sort of go in into it a lot more about their sort of relationship and. And actually, Dearborn sort of, sort of kind of spills the beans a bit, although she doesn't notice, of course, because we're all very stupid in this. Yeah, thing. we're not very good at noticing when people have feelings but, for. Yeah. yeah, but we actually edited it down. And we just thought it didn't, it didn't need to be done that early on. Yeah, we knew already, and uh, so we condensed it quite a lot. But only really had a couple of shots to work with. It was a, um, never always got enough coverage mm. on things, especially that scene. This is back. This is back from July when we had yes. about forty. 50 extras or something so like I that? I never actually counted up exactly how many people mm. we, we had. We had a lot of people turn up. Well, it was incredible. This was our they, first shoot. This was, yeah. I don't know what, I um, can't remember what day this was, but it was a day where we literally did Village Life. That was the day. I yeah. named it Village Life. It must have Life. been a Friday or a Saturday. It was like, oh, maybe it was Thursday because this is Fang coming in here, our, our dear, <laughs> beautiful <laughs> Fang, yeah. who we, you know, no animals were harmed in the making of this movie, but some of them were dead to begin with. And, and Fang was one of those in that... Philippa actually, when they were driving in to come and um, to the set, actually spotted that Fang had been hit by a, um, a car the night before or something. He was lying on the side of the road anyway, and she went, "You might be interested to know there's a deer uh, down there." And it's like, I don't know, just in case you're interested. And I said, "Don't joke with me." And and um, a couple and of the guys, it was two Ork, of two of the Vikings, two just... of the Vikings, or Ork and, and Jack went off to go and see, and uh, he, you know, Fang was in an okay 
situation and that he hadn't sort of exploded on something horrible and and they brought him back and we actually rigged him up we used him in two different scenes in fact some of the refugee stuff as well but you won't necessarily see him but he was rigged up in there as well um and it just added so much and we named him yeah. fang because he'd lost one of his teeth and he just had this one fang and it was just beautiful so um, he did well he did well he we, did. we immortalized him on camera there's another map yep oh uh, one of our visual effects shots yep that changed so much actually through in the last just few weeks. In the last week, I in think. In the last week, it, was, it went um, from various different things and just sort of. Yeah. Um, it was Christian, uh, who Christian eventually came and, did, and changed, did the last changed one. that map yeah. around. Yeah, it was problematic. It was hard doing green screen stuff. We didn't really want to do it, but we we don't have dramatic landscapes, and it was meant to be sort of looking over the burning villages and we, yeah. just something we couldn't do live. Well, I think I think it looks great. Yeah, it works really well. Um, this was one of the last scenes this as well, was, wasn't This it? was back in Epping Forest in the summer, July? Mm, July, August. July, August. August sort of like time, that, yeah. I think. We headed back and uh, and did this all handheld. This is me on camera, actually. Sorry for the dodgy camera. Yeah, it's, it's not very good, but, yeah. you know, what can you do? And we do? didn't have our adapter this day. This was a different camera. Yeah. So, but in the grade, we've managed to, Andy's managed to sort of just blur out the edges, which is Soften just, it up a just bit enough. And and it's nice because, although it might look a little fake sometimes, it gives it that softness that's, that's for a love scene works yeah, brilliantly. Yeah, it, it is a romantic scene, isn't it? So, yeah. No, I, th I think he did did absolutely brilliantly there. Yeah. But I, I remember having big ideas for, for loads of different sort of courting scenes that, yeah. that we're never going to end up being done because we needed more people. And um, we got to a stage where we kind of had to go, OK, we need to stop filming soon because we just couldn't, yeah, we couldn't, just couldn't do it. People, we didn't yeah. have the, the money and the time and everything mm. else. And I think this this one scene, which is basically all there is for the courting, yeah. just works just works perfectly. It's, it's, it's such all a that nice was scene. needed. Yeah. And it's just out in nature and the green. Oh, and we have to point out the, the head. head. The head if in you the look background, up, look behind him right look, now. Look just oh. behind him there. <laughs> There's the fallen oh, statue head. It's a beautiful um, matte painting that is just lost, unfortunately, because we, we wanted more in this sequence. We wanted to have fallen statues and and loads of stuff, lo loads of sort of like VFX, and it was mm. that thing that it takes a long time to do VFX um, and to find really good people who aren't working constantly um, and can actually dedicate some time to it. There's another VFX. Those orcs were not there. Yeah, they were not there. This was actually filmed in in Wales. Yeah, this was our trip. And it was to basically Wales. just you and me. Yep. Yep. In, we in, just we just decided car. to jump in the car and go. Yep. Basically, we yep. wanted some travelling stuff um, for a montage, and it wasn't it was for montage. It wasn't for this this journey that he ends up going on. We just put it together in the edit, and that was Epping Forest again. Yep. Um, but we were so lucky that that weekend because that was a weekend where everything just worst weather in 20 years yeah. when we're driving up to wales all we could hear on the car radio was like do not drive unless absolutely it's in an emergency your life is in mortal danger yeah. do not drive so we and just we added on unless you're making born of hope if you're making films it's that's, different that's okay if you're making yeah. born of hope you've got yeah. fine yeah. and then we jump back to july now yep yeah, yeah. So this is this is one our first week again in July, and the, the slight pity is that we had lots of extras there again, and we dressed all behind the hut. Um, there's a load more sort of stuff going on, but the the camera angle we picked, we sort of lost a lot of it behind yeah. the house, which is a but, shame. But having said that, yeah, that is what makes this scene because we were able to hold this scene in just one shot. Yeah, the if you notice, shot. we're not cutting in and out of it, no. and I think one of the reasons obviously because the good acting in the foreground but there's stuff going on in the background it's great if there had been nothing it would have been really boring and, and I don't think we could have gotten away with it no it absolutely but because these guys are just doing their things and it looks really natural yeah we were very lucky I mean with, with all these volunteers who came to be extras we were just absolutely blessed with that here's another visual effects shot yeah it, it's half and half really half, well half and half yeah same with this um beautiful matte paintings to sort of travel us into the mountains and this again was a different shot to our concept if you saw it at Rincon you would have seen a different shot um, yeah. to this epic this sort, sort of, of landscape the, and here we are in Clearwell Clearwell Caves, Caves. just before Doctor Who turned up yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah this was a fantastic location and the guys were so nice and generous we've been so lucky um, with this production to the locations that have been good to us and yeah. this was great. 
Although I, I kept thinking you were about to kill yourself because there was about 20 foot drop it felt like. Yeah, well you don't realise that well, when I was walking off there, another step and there was like a, a <laughs> 15 foot drop. Drop. Yeah, because um, we were um, over water and everything. And that's actually a part of the Doctor Who set. Yeah, the table there we yeah. stole from the Doctor Who guys. Because um, we had to remove a huge pillar from the middle of this because they'd stuck it there, so we had to move it. And this is a good scene because that is great. It's actually where we introduce more of Shacknar being the this, bad guy. Yeah, totally. And this was never in the original script. This was something that during it, the edit, yeah, we decided that we needed something to happen. There was there was something missing, and so their montage, random montage, became a journey to the cave to find things. And uh, yeah, and it's brilliant. It, it really helps explain the, the orcs journey what they're after yeah and a good manipulation as well um, a guy called Marin wasn't it in Germany who did manipulate um, the, the, yeah, the did, voice did of Shacknar Shacknar's voice he makes him a bit more menacing more menacing from Richard's Make voice mistakes <laughs> <laughs> Richard is, is very good in this part he's great yeah brilliant and he's not I mean he's not an actor not, not actually an actor uh, he sort of That's true, he yeah. does medieval swordsmanship and yeah. things. But he kind of just took this he, this yeah. character on, which was really cool. Yeah. And he loves the whole process. He took what? How many? Three hours three, to get him hours. ready. Well, this day was a nightmare. I mean, God, they took about six hours to do the orcs, and I, yeah. I was like pulling my hair out a little bit. Um, and, and these two guys were just drafted in on the day almost. Yeah, really. they were at Stockwood like literally opposite the village opposite where we were doing stuff where we did scene one the very yeah. very first scene with Maya was done opposite um, oh and that ring was made on the day by Nick it when was, I suddenly yeah. went Nick help we need a ring that <laughs> looks it? like the ring of Bowder here with some snakes and she, she sort of made yeah. made it at this putty that didn't dry she was really worried about it yeah. but brilliant Nick. I like this I like this transition because I think I think we managed to keep you know, because now she's sort of thinking oh there's something there and from we just come from the caves and yep. stuff like that. I think it's it's a good it's a good moment of tension. Yep. Probably it predictable it. that it's Arathorn, but you know it's still it's still a bit of a, oh. yeah. Hopefully it does its mm. job absolutely. And that, that was a this little scene was actually shot twice. Um, yeah. For various yeah. reasons, we actually this was the infamous scene that we had to sort of keep doing because. We lost the light at one point. We had camera issues Costume at one point. We changed well, the script. Yeah, then the reason we had to shoot the beginning again, we couldn't find a piece of costume because everything's just scattered in my conservatory mm. and not in a nice warehouse. But um, but it this, worked brilliantly. This, this as well is a really nice scene, and that's Adam's music, isn't it? Yeah, yes. I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> so many composers working on different bits. Yeah. But yes, pretty sure Adam did this little bit. Lovely. It's just a nice. Tender little moment, and it's great. The really, what we saw the first kiss, <laughs> which is all bring it down. Oh, I really like this, yeah, it's great. And we had some comedy in there, too. We, we There's <laughs> not a lot of comedy in this, but we're just, just some light heartedness, <laughs> not necessarily comedy. Comedy, no, but there's a couple but, um, of moments, but, but there's some nice yeah. stuff. You get some nice stuff actually. Yeah, you're a cheeky boy. That's why. That's that's. Arathon is cheeky. There's some more of our Viking extras, who became characters yeah. in themselves. They're just brilliant. There's Orc and Dags in the background there, and actually John, um, John Nor Peck Norton from Norton Armouries. Armouries, who supplied loads of our sort of um, polyurethane armor for our Orcs. Is there as well, hiding in the background behind Danny. <laughs> uh, yep. I like Dagmar. He's, da he's Dags really, is very Dags is just like, oh, oh, I know what's going on Cheeky. there. <laughs> <laughs> I know what they were doing behind that log. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, now I'm in trouble. Yeah. Now you're I'm in, in trouble. Big trouble. Oh, and this is our jump. That was our jump from one shoot to another. It's about three months. This is now there? our four man sh four man shoot. With Linda, our makeup artist, on boom, <laughs> yeah. and Ash doing camera, yeah, and and the two of us. So that's one of the things about Born of Hope that is really, it's it's so nice because it, it kind of some scenes have been filmed with you know a cast of like 30, 40 extras and two camera people and sound guy stuff, and some of the scenes have been been made by two people and went to Wales yep. in this case it was like four of us um, 
making a, a quite an important scene but yeah you know it's, it's and 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 to me you know when we're in the edit and stuff like it, it, it was amazing how well it all fits in obviously the color grade and stuff like that has helped yeah but even so no you know, totally it, i can i forget i often forget when i'm watching it which is surprising considering how many times mm. i've seen it and how you know being there and everything but that i forget that you know you flip from one scene to another and or one shot to another and they were different times or different things or someone wasn't there or something yeah and it's it's weird I and mean, it's good that i can forget that absolutely i like that fact i'm quite i'm quite shocked that there aren't more sort of major um problems with continuity yeah because you know, because we didn't have a continuity person. We didn't have a continuity that person. That was one of but, our but, hardest. But that's things. one of the things about independent filmmaking yeah. is that you become your own continuity person. You kind of go, well, I had this Our costume had to on. Help. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure that I had this knife and this thing, you know. And you kind of need to just for yourself. You need to yeah, be able to do to that. Help. Yeah, totally. And again, you know, it's one of one of those things that. A lot of people have done a lot of different things. You were just saying that Linda, our makeup artist in this, boom, Mike, was yeah. a boom <laughs> operator. And, you know, other people like uh, Richard Unger, our stills photographer, who's Helped doing amazing in stuff. Lighting. He's done lighting. Just rigging up lights rigging up into stuff. a marquee been, and things. Yeah, it's been amazing. Totally. Oh, another VFX shot with our crows and our ducks and geese and things by uh, Max. Did a fantastic job on those. This is our night shoot that was never meant to be a night shoot. Yeah, it was a very, this very was long day. This was back in Clearwell, in Stockwood. Yeah. They have this beautiful location, which you'll see again later in the Hill Troll. Yeah. Um, and we shot this in front of a um, sort of cliff-faced thing. Um, and we just, yeah, it just got so late and we just had to shoot. And poor, um, poor Ian, I mean, he had done the Hill Troll attack. He'd, yeah, all he'd done day, all day. You know, uh, but that was our last day and we had to go home and, Ian, you know, Ian had to go all the way back down to Cornwall. Ian lives in Cornwall, yeah, so it's... We had a long it, journey. We just had to film it. We had to. There was there was no chance to sort of come and do this again. So we had to keep going. We set up some lights. And it works, I, th I hope. It seems to work. It just looks like it's evening. Yeah. And they're, they're, they are in a sort of cavey type thing looking out of this view. Yeah, so. no, I, I think it works. It I works think it a works. lot better than I thought it would. Yeah, yeah, we were On the worried. day you're like, you're standing there and it was raining. It was, it was horrible weather. It and was, and apart from the lights that were set up, it was pitch black. Yeah. I mean, and you're just thinking. We had oh. little Amelia, she fell over something, I think, yeah. at one point. Yeah. Fell over some lights. Because, yeah, there was just nothing. And we were in this, like, dell like. Yeah. where they do they do live action role play in this place it's a fantastic location but yeah you, yeah, you'll see Beautiful. later on the hill troll attack and it's, it's an amazing location yeah but, uh, but this is a nice little scene um, we needed something really with father and son yeah um, and something to also sort of show about the rings we had to explain the rings thing because then of course nothing much happens <laughs> after yeah. that like yeah. the, the orcs have disappeared now for a while we, we go into sort of nicer times yeah, and, and we, so we, yeah, we are heading towards probably, the, you know, apart from the birth of Aragorn, we are heading into the happiest time in this film. The birth of Ar Aragorn. Aragorn. No, we are happy because of the birth of Aragorn. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, <lost> it. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, anyway, I like this moment. This is great. Beautiful look from, from Beth. She does such yeah. a great job. She did, she, I was like, you know, can you just sort of do something? Because she talks about Dear Hyle. And she just did this little head tilt thing. Yeah, and I was it's, just like, perfect. It's very good. Do that again. And then straight into Andrew. And he With just, a sword. Look at him. I mean, it that was face, Andrew's. it could sink a thousand ships. It was Andrew's idea to actually lift up the sword and point it right at you. Yeah, yeah. And just sort of like to look down it and sort of check it sharp. And I just, uh, I think that's great. And this was a pickup that I tried to film with you. Yeah. Actually, and, and this it, was winter. This is a good, and then it, you flipped the other way and it was summer. <clears throat> and a very good comedy moment. But yeah. Yeah, our only <coughs> comedy moment, really. Or, it's sort of, yeah. you know, uh, I was back in Epping Forest in the snow. Yeah. Which we and we just sort of thought, because, actually, you'll see the next scene is in snow because it was filmed after the uh, funeral thing when it was cold. Um, we wanted to sort of, we helped to link in the fact that it's suddenly snowy. Yeah. Uh, so when we had the snow, we thought, oh, let's just put something where he's sort of kind of contemplating what to do. And it luckily fits in really yeah, well. Was, <clears throat> I remember filming this scene where 
Arathorn is, is coming up to um, to ask for Girine's hand in marriage, and it was the only day of the whole shoot up until then that had been snow. Suddenly had snow. I remember on the Saturday, it was very cold, that was when we did the, yeah. the funeral scene, and I was, uh, <laughs> I was talking to Graham, who was one of uh, the guys who really did a great job on set, production uh, set managing dressing and production almost. managing. I mean, managing the set. Anyway. And, you know, he's from, from that area, and I was like, oh, you know, I bet you, you know, it's going to snow tomorrow. He's like, no, it has not snowed here for 15 years. Uh, <laughs> and and then he was bang. the first person I met the next morning, and he just looked at me and went, yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a lot. I mean, it looks like it's not snowed very much, but actually... It's well, only because we started see. so late. Yeah, um, it was melting. I mean, it was absolutely like bucketing it down, really, at about 11 o'clock. And I had no camera people because they, because everyone had to be sent home on the Saturday night because we had no accommodation. So they had to then come all the way back um, with about five hours sleep, if that. And so lots of it had already melted. But, um, but it works just brilliantly because it goes from sort of wintry and then we're and back into summer. now we're going to summer, yeah. Although not as summer as it should have been. It was July. What do you mean? What do you mean? Well, it was July, and it looks lovely. I mean, the, the grade, they've done a brilliant job. Andy's done a brilliant job on the grade. But, oh, my God, it was it was spitting with rain, and it was quite overcast. And you could kind of tell there's no bright sunshine and stuff. But we've managed to get it sort of warm and lovely, which is great. Yeah. And that's our shot of Andrew from the wedding, because he's not actually there. He's not actually in these shots. Again, he was working. Yeah. So we had to have a body double. Um... Uh, which you can kind Where of can spot in. Can you see him? You can see him over in. In various, in in some he? of the sort of Sorry, dancing stuff. Sorry, in the right hand stuff. side of the. Yeah. So Philippa had a, a double with it, which was um, <laughs> the most unlikely guy. He was our, <laughs> our medic for the day, and he was. Um, yeah, he was one of the Vikings. He came down with the Vikings and uh, didn't want to be on camera, but we, we were like, you're a good size and He's things. He's six foot something, something. must be. He looks right, and, and we just went, right, you're dial. Here's the costume, here's the wig, plonk it on, and now dance. And it was the wig that was, there was, he is. There, there he is, he is. in that green tunic That's over there. Him. That's him. Yeah, and reluctantly he was dancing, not and there he is happy. again. <laughs> he was not happy. I think secretly he was, he was ecstatic. You think so? Yeah. Uh, here's another beautiful moment. Oh, yeah. This is just great. I love this freeze frame. Brilliant. And that was a happy moment from the film. And yeah. now it all goes dark again. Now it goes a bit dark. Because so we're back at Stockwood. Yeah. In the dell. What they call the deep dell, even though we call it a shallow dell. But, yeah, beautiful. And we had our um, smoke machine. A brilliant, like, smoke cannon, basically. And uh, and we had Paul fogged the place out. Yes. So this is. I mean, if you you should have seen the film by now. Anyway, you can't be watching <laughs> this. This is our hill troll attack, which was uh, well, it was always a nightmare, and it was actually left well, not left quite late, but we just sort of like we weren't ever sure how we we're going to ta tackle it until we found Paul Paul Smith, who actually came on the shoot with us, which was fantastic, because he was the guy who did the troll. Um, and we contemplated so many different times how we we're going to do it. Were we going to do a CGI troll? Were we going and to do... here he comes. <laughs> here he comes. This is my f absolute favourite moment of the film is when this thing <laughs> <laughs> comes around the corner. No it's... swearing now. Yes. No, it's brilliant. I mean, we couldn't have asked for better because um, we actually... I, I sort of talked to Alex about writing the troll out of the film at one point and all we were going to do was have him roar out of the mist or something and we were going to like that's one shot we don't only want one shot we can't do it like mm. how do we do a troll and we were going to do a bigotcher puppet at one point we were going to do someone in a mask at one point and it was like how do we do this to really look good and, and then yeah then like I say we found Paul who had done this little sort of like wood elf type thing um, and uh and that looked really good. And we were like, this guy can do our troll. Yeah. And he could. It was great. Unfortunately, typically, he was extremely free at the beginning of the year. And when we actually did this, he suddenly got really busy. That's and so the poor guy goes, was yeah. desperately trying yeah. to do our troll while doing everything else. But it, it, it is amazing because editing this that scene with the troll, you know, obviously you're editing what we shot yeah just live action and, stuff and obviously the, the troll wasn't there yeah so it was like okay so was it John though? John was the John camera was camera so, so it's like okay so up. point swing he it swings up this way, see? point it up there we'll have there, to do a whole behind the scenes all about the troll yeah. I think just about VFX but yeah totally and then then of course we jumped that was like 
yeah, August, wasn't it? Of this year, yeah, like 2009. And then all of a sudden we're back in July on the second scene, the only second scene that you guys had yep. done together. Suddenly speaking, Elvin, <laughs> doing a nightmare scene. Just, yeah, I mean, that, that was that was quite... Um, it was quite tough for the two of us, I think. Yeah. Because you... You're in this scene, and it's not you know, it's not a nice little scene. It's very dramatic, and you're 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 supposed to wake up from this nightmare, and and your father has been killed, and you're reliving this moment where he's dead, and all that sort of thing. And then you have to wake up, and all these thoughts are coming from, and you have to speak, speak in a language. language that you have no idea what would sound like, yeah. apart from the guy who sent us the, the, yeah, the sound files. Very long. I mean, we never had anyone on set to help out, apart from one day, I think, Andrew mm. and that had some mm. help. But So we had Roman from uh, Germany who sort of sent sound files. And, and look, now this is into our first babies. Scene. This is our very first scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was the first Very, very first. Oh, no, lie slightly. Beth did go up a tree first. She did. But this is, like, essentially the first scene. And that is and that's a little bubble. little bubble. At two weeks old. He's a lot older now, over a year old now. Um, but yeah, great little but scene. But imagine that, that again. That's one of the things that you know we were blessed with, people's generosity. Yeah. And you know, someone just turned up. <laughs> yeah, you can use our two-week-old baby. Yep. This is our second. This is our second baby. baby. And we flipped from this angle is March '09 yeah. to November when we go back to the crowd. It's November '08. Yeah. Because we did it, first of all, with just a bundle of nothing. And then when we were there in March, as you probably heard the story, we just basically jumped on a couple with a baby and said, can we borrow that? <laughs> and this is little Luke from 2006. 2006 test shoot. Where we shoot. did the test shoot. And then effortlessly <laughs> into, I can't remember when this was. That was March, wasn't it? No, I think this is... Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, March. I think March, that's March, March 2009. And this is July. And then July. And he actually looks older, even though it's, it's July 08. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. But it's brilliant that we, we, and and that's, you know, a lot of coincidences that has helped us out. The snow in Wales was a Mm -hmm. a coincidence that helped us. The the wigs, you know, that wig that I'm wearing was not supposed to to be there, really. Yeah. But it was from 2006, so we could use it. Totally. No, this is a lovely little scene. I mean, it's sort of like, it's very, it's not really important to the story. It's, um, but I'm so glad we managed to keep it in because... It's our only real moment where we have with Halbarad. And we wanted to tell so much more of this this character's story. Um, it was meant to be a whole coming of age thing for him. And, and we had more. We had more when he was a younger character um, that Lars played. Um, but this was the only one that really ended up staying in the film, which was a shame, but lovely at the same time. And, and people who know the books will know the, the significance of that scene, of which Halbarad, is great. Yeah. Um, and that worked really well. And I always wanted a storyteller scene. I remember, and uh, we managed to sort of put one in just enough to sort of go, these yeah. guys, you know, this is what they do, they tell stories. And that was Dagmar from that was the Vikings. our Viking guy, Dags. He did that. Poor guy, he was sort of, he I was given the I thing like, on, on him the and day, I went, wasn't hey, it? hey, you can be our storyteller. So we actually had to write the thing and put it in the book. That's why he has a book and he's not sort of off, uh, off book, essentially, because he's kind of reading it. And here comes our introduction the twins. of the twins. The sons of Elrond, yes. There they are. Other characters, them and Halbarad were important to us to put into the film because they're the only sort of people we kind of know about that definitely hang around with these guys, you know. Um, and they're mentioned in the books. And they're described quite well quite well in the books in the fact that they they look very much alike, so much alike you can hardly tell them apart, which is why we wanted to go with twins. Which is true with our guys. Yeah, Matt and Sam. There's Sam, the other guy is Matt. And you can tell, I can tell the difference. Not everyone might be able to, but that one there, yeah, that's Matt. Back to Dex. I mean, it's nice, just a nice flipping between these two scenes. This I like warm, that. Warm, because... friendly, happy, everything's fine. Yeah. Not unknowing, un, un, you know, they totally don't They're know what's going of... on and, and exactly. here, all the, the danger that's apparently coming. Um, yeah. It would have been lovely to have shown more of the elves, but actually this is the best time to, to introduce them, really, to have them come at this point yeah. and give this news and stuff. And, um, you know, we almost I almost wanted to put them in the wedding scene and things like that because I thought they would be there, but at the same time we didn't want to lose that nice introduction. No, no I think it's, 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 a, it's great to introduce two new characters at this point. Yeah. Two important characters. That's, that's, yeah. Oh, another freezing cold night. 
Oh yeah. With no clothes on. Yeah, but if you notice Beth over there in the left corner, she has been provided with fur. Yes, because yeah. she's not wearing her right costume because mm. we've lost it. One of her beautiful white dresses and cloaks got lost somewhere along the line, which hopefully we're going to discover at some point, I really hope. Somewhere, hopefully. But in our November shoot, it was lost. So actually, she's wearing a sort of silvery white cloak that's that's our makeup lady. Mm. No, not makeup ladies. That's Kay's, our, one of our wardrobe people. Um, and actually, again, there's there's quite a long time between that these scene, um, That these scene shots, was meant really. to be sh- shot just after the, the hall stuff. Um... And again, it was a costume issue. It's amazing. Yep, yep. Your white shirt that you're wearing there was... We couldn't find it. We could not find that shirt. And we were like, well, how do we do this? You're meant to just walk out. It's meant to be just outside the hut. You walk out of the I hut. I need you- to stop, you know, because here comes my favourite <laughs> orc. I mean, the, my favourite orc in the whole this film. This was our very last shot of the film. Yes, it was. We shot this in October after we'd been to Rincon and showed the film for the first time. But we- that is one amazing orc. You have to, you have to admit that. <laughs> Wallock the pirate. Orc. Wallock the pirate orc. Yeah, back in Epping Forest for that brief snippet of a second, and we're back in Epping Forest now. But this is November. It's hard to remember. November. It is really. Yeah. yeah. This is the most beautiful time. Actually, we just caught the best colours in the trees yeah. on this particular day. Um, and the scene that follows it is like a week later, I think, and the leaves have and pretty diff- much dropped. Compli- yeah. But this day was just perfect. And this is a really nice shot as well. This is Neil. N- yeah. Neil Phillips. Um, Who's a great With the cameraman. adapter. And, and he's, he's just got some great shots. And, and just the adapter gives it that softness. Yeah. That was already there, but, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's difficult to capture that sort of thing. And yeah. No, it's fantastic. Um yeah, he's done a great job of this little scene. It's lovely. And it's kind of a nice moment with these characters. Um, it was always a bit sort of hard knowing whether it made sense that she was suddenly leaving and things like that. But I think it does. Yeah. No, I think it does. Oh, and that's that stab in the back line. <laughs> You're like his sister to me. <laughs> Ooh, thanks. That's the one thing I didn't want to hear. Yeah. yeah. People have commented on how silly Arathon is for not realising... He's not. He's not clever. Is no, he? but then she's not very clever for not realizing that they have one either. So exactly. We have that running theme. <laughs> people well, are people a little being stu- stupid. People, people <laughs> being a little bit stupid when it comes to love. Yeah. But. But yeah. There's just one thing I want to point out with the um, the sound effects that have been put in. When a we crow. get. Crow. Yeah. When we no, get. No, not crow. It's not a crow. No, it's, it's an a eagle. It's beautiful. Or something. If, when you notice that when Arathon goes back down to Halbron... But, but hold on, this is the nice kiss on that forehead. That's as close as she gets. Yeah. Thanks. And that's when she's leaving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But when you notice... But yeah, no, absolutely. There's some when he sort stuff. of says, this is not good, listen to it. There's some crows. And then in a moment there's... It's all right, they've heard the same. Yeah. <laughs> That one. Yeah. There it is. Beautiful is eagle really sound. Oh, yeah. Which maybe could link into the whole King Eagle thing. Arathorn. Arathorn King Eagle. King Eagle. Who knows? All very dramatic now. And now the look. Oh, that dramatic look into the trees that luckily just blocks the fact that Howard didn't realise we were still filming and just stopped behind camera. <laughs> and yeah, you can't notice. It's fine. And here we are on a completely different day again. Yeah. This was this was a week later. If you look at the trees, they're not quite as autumny. Uh, and this is Waterloo or Louis, our beautiful horse. And me trying to speak Elven. Um, yeah, I just fed him a carrot. That's why he was chewing. <laughs> Our maps again. Yes. Yeah, they are lovely. And hopefully you notice my beautiful sword just at the bottom of that beautiful shot. Beautiful sword. Thanks, Raven Armories. Oh yeah. Um, yep, there's our council. So yeah, this is this is interesting actually. This is another one of those camera trickery things that on this angle obviously there's a horse, and when we flip over, there's n- there's a camera in the way of the horse. So the horse is not even there. The horse had gone by that point. So we did all my stuff first and all the sort of wides with the horse. Yeah. Um, who was brilliant? I mean, it was a trained horse sort of film and, and TV and, and mostly stage it does um, Carmen and the opera mm. 
and uh, but it was very interesting. I mean, we're trying to do this traumatic scene, um, really, a sort of very intimate, quiet scene. And some every so often there would be something. The the horse at one point decides it was bored, um, or it was actually very relaxed, and it walked it walked off, and actually knelt down and was about to roll over. Apparently, um, and luckily the trainer. Um, she just ran in and stopped him because he would have crushed my bow and arrows oh, and everything okay. like that. But yeah, she just picked up Louis. I think that I really think that Danny does a really good job in this scene. Yeah, it's a brilliant scene. But yeah, you can see the horse in the background, so it's a bit impatient. <laughs> no, he's he's eating off the floor actually. We kept throwing food <laughs> down, so just to keep him in one place. And another little sound effect. After the kiss here, there's a little ooh by the yeah. horse. And if you look at Danny's head, he actually sort of turns his head. But in real life... Yeah, that, that was there, a fake sound. At, yeah, that's a fake sound. Fake and sound again, that's, and I said, put that in, and I think that's absolute genius. Because he's seen he's seen that move. Yeah. Uh, Danny's head move. It also foretells the thing. And if you noticed, we've now gone green. So the, ca the, uh, the colour changes happen. Yeah. And the reason is these guys. And these guys are coming in. And this is our beautiful moment where we spook the horse just enough for him to run. And our, everyone sort of stopped the horse from actually running away. But it's great to just have that moment. Yeah, no, it just it just makes this scene, you know, because... Totally. When we had a bit more fighting going on here, we, we had Ruth and Rachel from Arciani did a bit more of a fight thing, and Rachel did some doubling and things. It just never, yeah. unfortunately, worked well, properly it, enough. It, 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 it was mainly because w it took we the couldn't. Tension out yeah, a it just bit. took the pace out of the scene. Yeah, we um, kind of needed to get straight onto yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we took time. We, two days we shot that that scene with the dialogue, mostly the horse stuff the first day, and then fighting the next day. Um, but that's the nature of it, isn't it? You just have to sort of in the edit, you suddenly go, oh, it's not going to work, not going to work. Yeah. Uh, and Thank now you. we're finally in Nov sorry March of this year. March 09. Oh, and this is a VFX shot. Notice how black the, the hut is. Inside the hut, yeah. That, and why is that? Well, unfortunately, it was because our makeup artist, Linda, was sitting there staring at the camera with in bright orange sort of lighting and things with all our camera equipment and everything. Uh, yeah. It was one of those mistakes you sort of go, why didn't we notice that at the time? But... Yeah. But there's so much going on, and you know, it was a steady cam shot steady as well. Cam so shot, people running around, I'm really in it, tricky. Chris is in it, everyone's doing stuff, you know. So, yeah. And all these little pickups, some of the shot by various people. I think you even shot. I you, shot. You, you a did few some of camera them, yeah. work on that. Yeah. All these little pickups. We actually were shooting some of this stuff all at the same time, in a way, because we actually had about two cameras, maybe even three cameras, three going cameras at one yeah. point. Because there was so much to shoot, and we had two weekends, long, longish, no, two weekends at Westo to do all the fighting stuff. And we had, like, one weekend we did a lot of the Steadicam stuff, the running in the house. I think this might be November, suddenly. Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure. But... We jump around so much. But then this stuff was one of the weekends, running around. Oh, my goodness, I'm so unfit. I couldn't carry him very well. <laughs> and he was smiling his Is head off Is that why we only well. have two takes of that? Probably. <laughs> and get them in the hut, and the door doesn't shut properly. But, um, yeah, and then, again, this is, I think, November with all our extras sort of yeah. doing the map scene yeah. and hiding in the house. I love this shot. It's really nice. It's beautiful. With the sword that sword well, just so, glints well, just so beautifully. Cause, and I don't know if that story was obvious because that's meant to be her brother's sword that we see in the beginning. It was never really... It was not really set never up. Never really set up, unfortunately. You know, pe people might notice, we especially now. We, we were meant to show it in the funeral scene yeah. as well. And things. These are all our elements. It's amazing how many different things going on. And, how many people were involved in this? We had loads of fighters, reenactors, um, mostly sort of stage combat fighters and things. I mean, that's one of the things that people probably don't realise, but there's only about 10 orcs, or 10 or 15 orcs at 15 the most, and, you know, 9 or 10 rangers. Yeah. Um, so we constantly had to try to and film pick angles and that pick angles. Yeah. That made it look like there's so many more. Because we, I mean, this is meant to look like you know hundreds of orcs attacking. And this next shot, actually, not this one, but when we actually show sort of Gorg and Og and things, I actually threw all of our village people. We had village people. <laughs> we had <laughs> we had villagers dressed up, and I threw them into some some uh, helmets and things, and threw them to the back, because we really wanted this to look like a dense crowd of people. And yeah. it, it just about works. Um, you can't quite sort of see the, the joins. And this is uh, Lewis. <clears throat> um, one of our fight directors. 
I'll fight. Well, um, yeah. Plays Gorgonok. Yes. And therefore does a fantastic job. Uh, Shaknar again. Yeah. And these were all shot different days. I think we had a whole day just of you and Lewis fighting, essentially. Yeah, that took the best And then part all of these the little elements are shot separately and all edited in together. And yeah, and it was bright, bright sunshine, wasn't it? Yep. And this is another reason why the, the grade works so brilliantly. Because if you went back to how that looks, and I love that little dog. Uh, the horse. In the, back, the horsey thing in the, the background. The horse. Brilliant. Yeah. Thanks to Keely Hire for that one. Um, but it's all the elements, the guys running in the background. That's what makes it look I mean, just we're, real. So, I mean, we're so limited on what we had, but, but we man just about managed to do it. Let's have Brad again. I love this. I, I mm. had to take time out from doing the other... You were trying to do fighting stuff, and I had to take time out to get this shot of the, the kids because it was something I had in my head, and I desperately wanted it, and it, it worked Dagmar really well. in full flow. Yeah. <laughs> and there we are, getting absolutely knackered. Oh, and you don't see the fact that after this shot, we fall to the ground, and I smack my head. It's great. And here's... This is where... Uh, Elgrain gets her hero moment, yeah. but we sort of—I uh, I did fall flat slightly in the fact that we should have made um, um, Gilroy's character was meant to look braver than she possibly does in this scene. Unfortunately, yeah, um, it didn't. It was one of those things that when you're on camera and trying to direct, you kind of can miss things. And if um, and I didn't probably point it out to other people. Love that moment. This Not the fact that you get hit. That's of course, <laughs> but this is our definitely our hero. Yeah. Oh no moment. Yeah, where you kind of go, oh, everything's it's lost. It's kind of classic. And... It's a classic moment. We have a lot of classic sort of yeah, things where, it's... is he going to, no, he's going to be okay. But we wanted to, to show the peril because anyone who knows the story, and I don't want to give anything away just in case you haven't seen it yet, but, you know, peop people know that, that, that possibly it's all going to end badly. Mm. Uh, so we, but we wanted to keep people guessing about when. Yeah. Uh, and how, and how maybe. Um, exactly it was going to so because there's certain elements Tolkien gives us certain things hey that's a head coming off moment and, yeah. and the look of the blood coming out we actually got some VFX guys to, to help us out there realm pictures um, we didn't get much sort of blood splurting moments in this film because, no. because of our limitations but we managed to put some in there just to really help um, yeah Oh. This oh, is where it all starts to not, go badly wrong. This is where it starts to go. I, mean, I, I, I love this part of the story because you, you kind of build up that, oh, yes, it, you know, Gorgonon yeah, is defeated, good. the orcs are running away, everything's going to be fine, and then, oh, no. No. This is this not This is good. where it starts to go downhill, really, essentially. I mean, we've we've obviously already seen that Dihaborn has come to an end. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, no, another character we like and have grown to know. Um, and uh, and again, it's beautifully shot. We did this back in November. It was freezing cold. I spent an entire day, I think, on the ground, mm. shaking with cold. <laughs> but it was great. And it's just as who, who filmed just as and Chris this. Charles, wasn't it? Um, yeah, did some of it yeah, as well? both both those guys yeah. did this. We actually had to have some lights for this because it got so dark. Um, but yeah, I think at one point we had really big, um, really big, re real. Like really bright sunshine, mm -hmm. and then it went very dark very quickly because obviously it's November as well. We had limited light, and I remember finding this really hard because I think the one of the first shots we decided to do was my close up of this shot, and luckily I didn't have time to get nervous about it, um, because we were just I don't know all of a sudden we were doing it, and I was li literally in the middle of the scene. And then kind of went, I've got to die now. <laughs> like, in my head was suddenly thinking, oh no, I've got to do this. And we hadn't decided whether I was going to leave my eyes open or not. Am I going to do that? Have I done that? Can I do that? <laughs> and, I, and I just sort of had to just do it. And I think that was good because I couldn't get worried about it. I well, just did it. I think it's probably why it works so well. It's like, I mean, it, I don't it, think this is the, the shot. This it is wasn't the take, planned. necessarily. No. no, I mean, it said in the script that I, I'd die with my eyes open. But I remember being really nervous about it, thinking, oh, no, I don't want to blink. And be, and, and obviously, you know, I'm the director, I'm lying there, and there's loads, everyone's watching. It's crazy, like, you don't know it, obviously. 
from a shot like this but absolutely everyone's watching what's going on and it's so nerve-wracking you just have to forget it's one everyone's of the things in, in filmmaking that, that you know people don't realize that because when you're when you're watching this there's two people in, in the shot and people well, think it's very yeah well the there's something in the background no but before, i mean this, you know? this shot you're looking at someone who's not me i think oh no i was gonna say it's k but k's there in the background but you know, we I'm had, not we in had, this shot. No, we had two different people being Danny you. Danny at one point was me, and and I, I even forget that. But, but yeah. what I was getting at was, you know, you don't realise, when you're watching, you think, oh yeah, these people are just there, but you don't realise that there's an enormous team around us. You know, and, and All the when, when we look watching. At, yeah, when we get back actually to looking at um, the guys looking at me, Behind them, there's a group of people sitting Three wafting, guys wafting smoke. Wafting smoke and, stuff and there's like a great, uh, I have to show you some bloopers at some point, but uh, yeah, there's a great blooper where everyone runs off going, yay! And there's just the, the guys in the background wafting smoke. <laughs> and this is obviously, this is the, sort of the, the classic hero. Yeah, pep, pep well, talk, this is our really. pep talk that wasn't didn't want to be too much of a pep talk. Mm. I remember actually saying to you, don't make it a big war speech. Because the point is, you know, you've just lost a lot of friends and family and things. This yeah, is, a, oh, I'm angry, but I'm, I'm not going to suddenly go, let's go to war, you know. Mm. So it, it, it sort of builds into one, but without being too, too Yeah, no, I, I remember doing it that day, and I think it was, it was probably the, the best piece of direction. <laughs> um, because I did it a couple of times where you kind of, you build into this crescendo and you, you feel like, when you go, let no orc leave this alive. You really want to go, come on! Roaring it. Um, I did that a couple of times, and then you sort of said, well, let's do, let's try one try way. One. Kind of sort of containing it. It's just there. The anger is in there, but don't yeah. let it out. And I think that works really, really well. It does. And this, that was a brilliant moment. I love, uh, I love, that's one of my favourite bits of Elven, I think. When you turn mm. to her and say, I will come back to you, I promise. And it's, be it's a beautiful line, the way it's sort of, Said in Elven, yeah. And then when you run off with the whole cloak going and then and you know that he's not going to come back, you yeah. kind of know because if there's it, something bad about it all. Yeah. <laughs> if someone says, "I'm I'll going come back, to come I back," promise. I promise you know that they're not going to. <laughs> not in the state they left anyway. Um, this is nice sound effect stuff. Oh, on. lovely! Yeah, because we wanted to keep this slightly un unreal. Um, so it's got that kind of echo here. Enos has done this great thing with the slow motion fighting where he's kind of put in the sound effects but not every single one of them and they're kind of slightly spooky. So, like, yeah, there's just like, almost wind sound, which is great. And um, and the music as well, just building, I think. Mm. And this is great. This is this is the thing where you... Basically, Arathon is run off ahead of everyone else. Everyone else got stuck with all these orcs, and they're just trying to wipe out every single last one, so that none of them can uh, can escape essentially, and, and then come back to haunt them. And really, yeah, I mean that that's, that's you know his his order. You yeah, know, was let no orc leave this. And he's alive, absolutely and he's... taking that himself, which is why I mean he's got these last sort of what six. Yeah, or something. These are basically the last ones. He's sort of gone straight to the the back of the pack. Yeah, and just he knows that he has to get all of them. Because if just a single one escapes, they well, will tell I, him about. You can about see the, the rain in that shot just now. Oh yeah, it was absolutely. It was it was torrential, torrential rain. Torrential rain. When we were one doing minute that and then not the next. And, but you, I love it because there's real like this is. Well, that's a kill and a half. Yeah, you are absolutely wiping them out. Like, there's no sort of like kill, kill, kill. This is I will kill you until you are mush. Yeah, <laughs> type thing. And we were absolutely knackered, all of us, because we did it. I don't know how many times or ten different rain, times. It was he... rainy and it said muddy and and you just sort of you're on your knees. You're got coming up. You're it's on your great, knees. It's great because it really, it's like... really realistic in that sense. You were absolutely knackered mm. and really sort of brought that into the fight. I think which worked really well. Um, and this is beautiful in a horrible kind of way. That yeah. color change just works so perfectly, and the sound effects work so perfectly. And this actually, oh no, not this, but the next shot. This was shot by me on our day of the four of us. Yep. Again. Just the four of us um, back in Epic Forest. So you're Forest. flipping, and there's I don't know three, four weeks between. And this shot is oh about as long God, as it is. Yeah. He got, he did his hours of makeup. God knows how many hours of makeup, only for our P2 cards and battery to run out. Um, 
basically as soon shot. as we got that shot and it went and no one had done a backup and uh, I was not very happy I remember I don't think Richard probably was either because it literally I think it I literally think cuts it run there, out there I think it literally does and I was like hello and then we're back into a completely different situation this is actually Westo yep um, however many months later or a couple of weeks later maybe um, and another VFX shot actually the background there yeah the background has been replaced he'd been completely rotoscoped to give a slightly different background and again that stab was stab made was a different day. months later yep he wasn't even there no that's horrible ow that's gotta hurt using your own arrow against you that's not that's nice that's just wrong and we're back that's in November because you can tell by the weather being so dismal yeah, but, but it beautiful. just this suits the more mood second of the camera whole stuff. Thing. That was actually Chris Bouchard did the the previous shot yeah. uh, that we're about to. Yeah, this one, which is great because you know they just managed to get some little elements that we might have missed because of time, um, and managed to put them in, which is great. And uh, it's really nice stuff here. It's just, it, it just and with the music as well, it kind of it just. Put you in that it just mood. shows the desperation, That's, really, yeah. and the, the sort of like hopelessness, really. They're just waiting for the men to come back. No idea whether they will. And we, you know, as I like that we've done that a couple again. of times in the film that we we show the audience something has happened. Yeah. And then we cut to characters in the film who don't know the same thing. Don't thing. know what the audience. So the audience are sitting there while Going, you know. Oh my goodness! You're he's a, not going to come back. Yeah. You know? Um. But the characters don't know it, and that that's that's interesting for yeah. for an audience to know something that the, no, it's fun. the yeah. characters don't. And this is just so sad, this stuff, and and so hard. I I still want marvel at the fact that you managed to do this because you're trying to do essentially a death scene with this four year old, <laughs> with little Luke. I mean, bless Luke. him, oh, but yeah. he, you know, it's hard. We've got to get him to look sad. We the the shots we got are a miracle, really. This is beautiful shot. Yeah, this is, one of, this is my favourite shot. It's, it's just a shame it's slightly too grainy, but it's brilliant. <laughs> but it's great, and it works so well, and this is actually, some of this is done in the edit. It was not yeah. meant to, to be this order of things, essentially. No, that it scene was meant was to get the ring really. after you die and all this yeah. stuff. You know, it's to sort of pull on your hand and get the ring. And, but it works so perfectly. And here, I mean, Beth did... Beth did a great job. I mean, and just the, the fact that the guy's walking away in the background, just clearing the space and... Just, yeah, but she did. I think she did like two or th what, three or four takes of that. At least, yeah. And I was lying there. I was thinking, gosh, she's in. She's absolutely devastated. Yeah. And she did. I think she really did get sort of yeah caught up in it. In, I in think a bit. so. And, and, and it's just a great performance because that sort of thing is really difficult. I mean, yeah. crying on on screen and, and you know, yeah. Oh no, totally. And the fact that yeah, like while you two were trying, to, I was getting you two to do that stuff. While we were also going, Luke, Luke, what colour are Chris's eyes? What do we do? Look at that. Can you find the worm? And like trying to sort of direct Luke while you two are just being. She's being. I'm going. Keep crying. Keep crying. Because her crying was making him sort of get really sort of sad slightly and things. It was yeah, amazing. Um, it's amazing what you have to do. Yeah, it's hard work. And this is another brilliant oh, moment. Oh, this, this little moment this is just... I love it. You can see on Luke that he knows what's coming. And it's, it's such... It's really natural because he oh, was, he's brilliant. just him. He's just a boy. Yeah, no, totally. But um, the, And it just brings a lovely moment with Dehail. It really helps you feel for that character. Yeah. Because um, we've seen very little of him. We thought, oh, it's a stern man. Blah, blah, blah. But, you know, you see him in the wedding with a bit of a smile. You see him just, just in that moment playing with, with Aerith Gorn. And then, of course, with... Um, go on, you know, he Same gives it, just giving her a hug. It's just you know, a, such a tender moment. Yeah, so all we needed, you know. And just having her walk off with the elves. Mm. As we kind of go out of focus on them, which is lovely. It's sort of, and, and uh, you know, if you look at the background, everyone else is leaving Tower Dill as well. You, you can't, almost can't see it, but, but that's the, the idea. And then just sort of, again, using the maps to bring us into another location. Um, because I, I mean, I did have grander schemes for how for to shoot Arith, yeah. uh, to how to shoot Rivendell, and it just sort of we kind of 
it was a time and money and everything issue. And a location issue. Well, that's it's what I mean. It's difficult to find location. something that looks, you know, it when you don't have Jackson's budget no. to, to create a 3D model of Ruindale. Yeah, um, it was very hard. And, and so, I mean, we ended up shooting this in a graveyard near yeah. West Doe. Um, no, sorry, not near West Doe, near, no, near, Ebbing, near Forest. Ebbing Forest. Yeah. It's just in front of this sort of monument thing. And we just did it there and as the sun went down, basically. But um, but it, it works, you know. It, it tells the story, which is what we needed to do. And um, maybe for the people who don't, you know, because some some people have said, why isn't there subtitles under that last Elven? Thing? Yes, the last so Elven thing. Well, the last Elven thing. What she's saying is, I gave hope to the Dunedain. I have kept no hope for myself. Anyone who knows Tolkien will know that that is something that he wrote. That Gawain says to Arathor, Aragorn, sorry, when she's essentially about to go off and die she sort of says nah that's it and it's said a lot later which is why we kind of did it once it's blacked out because she doesn't say it to him then she says it to him when he's about gosh I don't know 80 something um, and and he's sort of trying to persuade her no no there, there will be good times ahead But so, so she, she does die before he becomes king and things and it's a really lovely line and, and it's always been sort of part of it I mean the point is I gave hope to the Dune of Nine hope was our main theme uh, which is you know why it all, all did it and things so yeah we didn't and we didn't want to put subtitles we thought no. that was that was for the fans that was for people who knew it um, or who would go and try to find out or who would go and find you know, out what it yeah. was yeah absolutely um, and yeah I mean to the credits this is my little credits, this is our, yeah. another little homage I mean, obviously this is a Lord of the Rings essentially a Lord of the Rings fan film um though hopefully most people don't sort of even see it like that I don't even see it like that anymore but it is a Lord of the Rings film and uh, we did get inspired by um, Peter Jackson's movies um, and by all of that so this was my little homage to, to the Return of the King credits because I think they're beautiful and I love them um, and I thought it would be lovely to try and do the same thing so obviously very, in a limited kind of way so um, managed to get a couple of our um, artist, artists to do sketches of some of our main characters. Not all of them. We we kind of ran out of time. I was literally doing this in the last few weeks. Well, I think the last sort of couple of drawings came in about five or six days before it went online on Daily Motion on the first of December. Well, yeah, and actually the um, the final credits that you see are not even on the Daily Motion version because I. When, when the Daily Motion version cut out the credits, oh, yeah, them, yeah. I actually went back into the credits, did some updates, put in some more stuff. Um, so, so yeah, some of these mm. weren't even in there. But um, And the song as well is a bit of oh, a, yeah, yeah. a homage as well. Yes, we wanted a kind of Into the West style song. We thought it would be lovely to have a song of some kind. Um, and so sort of sat down with a friend of yours, John Glue. John Glue, yeah. And um, and basically went back and forth with lyrics and, and things and, and kind of showed him the film and, and got a whole idea. And it was, yeah, basically sort of all linked in from the water stuff, the rippling water and the stories. And, and hopefully anyone who listens properly to the song will really sort of hear. There is a kind of a, it's not just a song, you know, there's, there's meaning behind all those lyrics. Absolutely, yeah. And I think it's captured beautifully and nice arrangement as well yep yeah because he song. actually just did a guitar arrangement yeah. and then kevin one of our composers took that and added all of the orchestration underneath it which is great um and yeah no it's it's beautiful i really love it um and then we sort of uh, when that sort of finishes we go into some of rob's music from from the film yeah that's right we're going to st but no, that's that's a good point actually the whole music bit is one of the things that you know we went to Rincon and we showed a, f a version of the film down there, but it was all temp music. We t took well, some temp music, everything from, essentially, wasn't well, it? yeah, temp music, but, but temp especially sound. the music, and, yeah. and therefore it felt a little bit some of the music was just chopped up because we needed just to show, well, here's now a bit of a dramatic, dramatic yeah. thing. Here. So, so it went a bit up and down, and using stuff like. a lot of Howard Shaw's stuff, yeah, so we had Lord of the Rings music, and but. then you know, then we go in, we have like four or five composers, and they compose stuff for different parts of the film but what amazes me is that it really sounds like it's just one score yeah there's nothing that stands out to go oh that is clearly that made by someone else no you, you know? sort of forget naturally there are bits as well we did sections didn't we 
but we also have like some of the fighting stuff for example or well, some of the stuff near the end we literally go from one composer and then we mixed into another composer because we liked a certain section they did and then we went back into a different one and, um, and Enos did a fantastic job to help sort of edit between different composers yeah um, because we were literally I mean it was some lots of this stuff was so to the wire it was unbelievable <laughs> It um, was very, very we close. Were it was a close going, call, really. It was extremely close. You're lucky to have the film, guys, seriously. But, um, yeah, we were, like, just sort of going, next section, next scene, next bit. And uh, amazingly, they all came in on time. But we were literally to the wire cutting stuff. And they're, they're almost... They're, it's lucky that all the guys are so brilliant <laughs> because we didn't have to turn around and go, you need to do this again, try this differently. Um because I mean there was no time to do that so we were mm. luck so lucky that they were just being they were able to nail it on the head straight mm. away and go there you go there's that scene and you went yep that scene is perfect that looks good and speaking of lucky to have all these people I you know, can't believe when I I mean I wrote all those names down and um, and I I hope to God that I did not forget anyone and I'm very sorry if I did um and we do appreciate every single person who gave us even 50p towards this film because it would not have happened without all of these people. Um, and uh, yeah, just I mean, how many is that? I don't it's, actually it goes know. On and on, it goes on and it? on. And th these are all the Hobbit guys who who gave um, up to up to like a hundred pound each. Yeah. Um, not you know some varies, and then there's the Rohirrim guys, the Rohans, and they gave sort of a bigger chunk and then bigger chunks, of, and. Um, yeah, just fantastic. I mean, absolutely fantastic. Thank you to everyone. And that's, I guess, the end of our... This is the end, this of, the is the end of the Thank commentary. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Bye.